Hello, I am Dr. Kiran Nandiwada signing in to present the part 2 of this international research training programs project on vitamin D. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Nikhil Bharadwaj. I am the research head of Krishi Orthopedic Welfare Society. I'd like to welcome you all to join our IIT program, the international research training program with us. Best of luck everyone. Hello everyone. Welcome to IRT program and uh, I am your research coordinator. My name is Vaishnavi Nandivada. It's uh, good to know you all and looking forward to work together and produce some very valuable research. Welcome you all. It's time for some questions to the research trainee students, medical students, before I take off on my lecture, which is a continuing orthopedic education. So I ask this question to our Tessa Thomas. Is vitamin D a hormone? What does it do as a pro-hormone? Who coined the term vitamin D? Doctor, so vitamin D is a pro-hormone and pro-hormones are compound that serves as a precursor to hormones. This pro-hormone travels through the blood in an inactivated stage and get activated as they reach a cell after post-translational modification. So our vitamin D plays an important role in different functioning of our body. And this term was given by Mac Collum after many of his researches. Next question is for Jordi Jojo. When sunlight does not reach the dark depths of deep oceans, how is vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin, obtained in animals? There are some exceptions. There are some animals which do not require vitamin D at all. Yes, that is true. But some animals do require. Then how do they get it? Hi, sir. Since many fishes in the ocean are blessed to be bathed by the sunshine that they receive from the surface, many deep sea animals are in scales of it. So they rely on other organisms in their environment, such as zooplanktons, which consume phytoplanktons that photosynthesize vitamin D from sunshine. So, many deep sea organisms rely on these smaller group of organisms for the vitamin D supply in their body. Thank you. Now, let me ask a short feedback about this ongoing IRT program to Ms. Sagarika Jaikumar. So, my impression about the International Research Trainee Program is that it will help youngsters like me my, to uh, get exposed to the research field and know how to work on a research paper because our curriculum mainly focuses on the theory and exams part. The other question is, is the vitamin D in our body more from sunlight or from dietary sources? Uh, vitamin D is procured more through sunlight rather than diet because there are very limited sources of food through which vitamin D can be absorbed in our diet whereas sunlight is just the matter of exposure to it. And out of the given 5 diagrams of vitamin D, I would choose diagram number 2 mainly because it shows us what happens to vitamin D at various levels like at the level of skin, liver and finally kidney. It also gives us the receptors which is used at those levels. And finally, what happens to vitamin D after it gets activated in the kidney is also given in the diagram. It again shows us other sources apart from skin like dietary sources and what happens in the GIT for the vitamin D. So in a single diagram, everything is covered. So I would choose diagram number two. Thank you. So it's always best to work hard from the first day of reading a new chapter. The next question goes to Mr. Ajin Matthews. So, what is the role of genes in vitamin D metabolism? Hello, sir. So, regarding your first question, uh, if genetics play a role in vitamin D synthesis, my answer is yes. Genetics do play a role in vitamin D synthesis as changes and variations in certain genes can affect how efficiently the body produces vitamin D in response to sunlight. For example, genes that are involved in the metabolism of vitamin D such as the ones coding for vitamin D receptors and enzymes that help convert vitamin D into its active form can influence the vitamin D levels. So uh, additionally, genetic factors can impact how vitamin D is absorbed from the diet and is utilized within the body. Regarding your second question about if uh, the diagrams are similar to each other and if the genes involved are shown within the diagrams. So the diagrams differ from each other based on the information that it provides regarding the sunlight exposure, 
the conversion of the vitamin D, uh, the liver and kidney conversion, etc. Um, and the, in certain diagrams, the genes involved are also mentioned. Uh, but there is a lot of information that I am still lacking on and I am looking forward to learning more from you, sir. Thank you. So, my last question before I start my continuing orthopedic education, I would like to highlight the importance of preventive orthopedics. So, Dr. Sama, I would like to know, would you like to treat a fracture or a deformity or some organ failure due to vitamin D deficiency which has been neglected by the patient or overlooked? Sometimes, sorry to say, yes, it happens. Overlooked by the clinician, treat it or you would do mass screening or mass advice of patients, education of patients, good nutritious diet for children, mothers, expectant mothers and other scenario of vitamin D deficient resultant deformities and diseases. Would you prevent it or treat it? I am a staunch supporter of preventive orthopedics since 30 years now. What is your opinion? So vitamin D is very important in regards to bone development. Not only bone development but as well as cardiovascular disease, autoimmune diseases, osteoporosis, diabetes and infections as well. So what happens is when you have a lack of vitamin D in the body, it, res it results in you having multiple scenarios where you can first of all have poor glucose metabolism in the body that can lead to insulin insensitivity for example. You can have vitamin D uh, deficiency that results to osteoporosis, early onset osteoporosis because vitamin D is essential for calcium uh, absorption, right? So when you don't have vitamin D properly in, the, in your diet, and of course you'll have uh, issues in regards to uh, calcium, uh, calcium absorption and therefore you can have weak teeth, weak bones and you can be you can be also prone to more injuries for example more fractures most patients these days have um, at least some level of vitamin D deficiency so it's always important to drink milk to take vitamin D supplements for example calcium supplements all these are very very vital in regards to preventing be it fractures any sort of things you will need to have proper vitamin D def uh, vitamin D supplementation to keep yourself healthy pregnant women for example can have vitamin D deficiencies and so it is extremely important for us to actually treat the mother and to treat her in, in regards to getting her vitamin D levels up when there's decreased vitamin D in a uh, in an expectant mother what happens is this can lead to poor fetal bone development it can lead to preterm birth it can lead to um, uh, um, loss it can uh, lead to the mom having uh, weakness in her bones as well and her overall health will be significantly weaker without uh, vitamin D it can also lead to gestational diabetes and preeclampsia pre as well so thank you so much Dr. Usama and all other participants in this present uh, episode. Now let me proceed with my continuing orthopedic education lecture on the same vitamin D cycle. Vitamin D, we all know that sunlight is important. That's why it's called as sunshine vitamin. Sun will fall, I'm going in the sun and sun will fall on my skin, ultraviolet rays type B type of ultraviolet rays will change 7 dehydrocholesterol into cholecalciferol. Now for this in one chart only it was mentioned heat isomerization is present as an additional needed factor. It's not ultraviolet rays falling alone that the skin must be prepared dark skinned people with a lot of melanin or sunscreen lotions or some kind of skin problems, too much of clothing, okay, time of the day when the sunlight is falling on us, how much body is exposed, minimum 40% must be exposed. So body surface area that is exposed to sun is also important. Now the quality of uh, sun rays that are falling, the timing of the day, the latitudes, where are we in the, in the globe, so many things, season, everything, day. The timing in the day is also all important for determining how much vitamin D we gain. Then once it comes to the 7 dehydrocholesterol getting converted into the pre-vitamin D3. Pre-vitamin D3. Pre-vitamin D3 then is converted by heat isomerization into cholecalciferol. Now, People may ask, what is the best source? Is it the animal source or plant source? Yeah, mostly it is the animal source. The ultraviolet rays and the sun rays plays a very, play a very important role. And uh, animal sources, they contribute to major contribution of vitamin D. Now, for people 
who are mostly vegetarian what happens in the gut both cholecalciferol and ergocalciferol are absorbed they all go to the liver 25 hydroxylase is an enzyme that is produced how by the action of a gene now what is this gene cyp2r1 gene it's a gene okay. that will influence the release of 25 hydroxylase so that we have 25 hydroxylation taking place in the liver it is called as what it's called as calcitriol once calcitriol is formed it goes to the kidney now let me stop here any skin problem vitamin d comes down agreed lumen in the intestine lumen if you have malabsorption crohn's disease irritable bowel syndrome any kind of a problem in the lumen will lead to reduced absorption of vitamin d2 and d3 again vitamin d levels will fall see now coming to the liver if the liver has some some hepatic issues like some diseases genetic problems or this cyp2 r1 is not produced then also this 25 hydroxylase enzyme is not activated so hydroxylation is not there so patient develops uh, 25 hydroxyl vitamin d3 not produced so that leads to muscle pains bone pains many other hypertension cardiac problems many other vascular problems renal problems all these things this is how you should treat now once it leaves and goes to the kidney there cyp24 b1 this uh, gene will activate the release of one alpha hydroxylase which converts the 25 hydroxy vitamin d3 into 125 dihydroxy d3 calcitriol is the name which is the active form and one thing to be remembered calcitriol does not have a long life that's why when you want to test in the body what is the vitamin d that we are testing we are testing 25 hydroxy d3 we are testing understood now once uh, calcitriol is formed it has to be removed 24 a1 is a gene which converts the re and releases the 24 25 hydroxylase so this will cause a 24 25 dihydroxy vitamin d3 which is the inactive form of calcitriol the active form which is excreted out now here if there is any problem in renal like chronic kidney disease or any other genetic absence of these uh, genes okay it causes its own effects like autosomal recessive vitamin d resistant rickets cross uh, rickets in the children hypocalcemic uh, uh, epilepsy many other the things may be found that is the reason why we have to do blood tests please do the tests and get the right diagnosis done so once it is done what happens to the 125 hydroxy dihydroxy d3 how does it have, uh, act at the receptor level please remember when it goes there there is a fetal growth factor 23 which is a very important uh, uh, gene which will help you this factor just see on the slide i'll tell what is happening i'll i'm going to type if it is present if it is not present what is uh, rxa retinoid x receptor what is vdr vitamin d receptor vdre vitamin d receptor expressors all these things will give a stimulus for transcription of the genes and produce the needed effect this completes the vitamin d now if there is any kind of an abnormality the hyperparathyroidism or parathyroids are stimulated they can have other uh, organ systems which get stimulated to regulate the vitamin d because vitamin d is important in the total maintenance of the bone metabolism okay of other organs also vitamin d plays a very important role thank you so much all of you bye bye thank you